Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective, and today we have a bit of an interesting machine. So first thing you'll note is it is a silver ThinkPad, and you'll note at the back of the hinges that this is a Yoga. Now, it is not an X1, and it is not an X uh, three-digit series. It's not even an X two-digit series. This is actually an L390 Yoga. So one of the kind of less popular uh, iterations of the Yoga or the 360 machine, of course, is the L series. The L series is sometimes looked on a bit negatively, and I think that's a bit unfair because there are some benefits to the L series that we don't see on other uh, laptops. So let's quickly unpack what exactly we have going on with this unit here. So the 390 Yoga came out in about December 2018, January 2019, and it came in either a black color or the silver color. And regardless, it has a magnesium lid and then essentially a plastic uh, chassis. Now, it's still a pretty darn good plastic chassis, but it's not um, carbon fiber or anything like that. So we do see a 13.3 uh, inch 1920 by 1080 IPS 300 nit panel, 800 uh, to one contrast ratio. And that's pretty much the same panel that's on the X390. So you're not getting any less of a display uh, when you're going to this more inexpensive model. The CPU configurations, however, are different than the X390. So in the L390, we have an i3, two i5s, and one i7, eighth generation Intel. All of those are being powered by the Intel UHD GPU for the era. And interestingly enough, these can handle up to 32 gigabytes of DDR4 2400 megahertz RAM. And that's interesting for two reasons. One, it's actually socketed, which it's not on the X390. And two, the X390 maxes out at 16 soldered on. So if you need RAM, the L390 is the choice. Like, it's, it's easy, uh, which I find pretty fascinating. On the inside, you have one M.2 slot, which will handle either a 2242 or 2280 NVMe. And here's where we dive into the options, uh, because I find that they're absolutely fascinating what's included and what is not included, because it depends on the color of the machine. So follow along uh, with me here. So first off, the keyboard backlight is an optional feature that this one has, but not all of them do. So that's one thing to keep in mind. You do have two options of Wi-Fi cards. Uh, both of them have Bluetooth, both of them are fine, but there are uh, two optional cards there. Now, the ThinkPad Pen Pro, which is garaged on the right side of the machine, is optional, but can be purchased afterwards. Now, I'm gonna have to probably put some text on the screen to explain this next bit. There are four different camera combinations. So you have your standard uh, 720p web camera. Then you have a 720p web camera with infrared uh, for Windows Hello. Um, but that is on the black model only. So uh, you'll notice up here on the silver model that we do not have um, any IR camera. Those were exclusive to the black models. Now, you can get also your 720p uh, IR camera with a rear five megapixel uh, camera and that included a fingerprint sensor. In fact, it's usually exclusive. Or the black only, you could get the front 720p infrared Windows Hello, rear five megapixel uh, camera with the fingerprint reader. Uh, so between the two, the silver models don't have some specific configurations for reasons unknown. I suspect it comes down to tooling and colors and maybe uh, some parts they just didn't want to make a silver and a black version of and it didn't look good. Um, that's kind of my speculation on that. All of this is being driven by a 45 watt hour battery, which is slightly uh, smaller than the X390, but to me, perfectly acceptable trade-off given that you have uh, socketed RAM, 32 gigs, all that good stuff. Let's do a quick tour of some of the ports and features. Uh, we've already looked at the camera that's up here. We, of course, have the backlit keyboard, track point, dedicated track buttons, uh, pretty deep, thunky click pad. This has the optional fingerprint reader. If we close the device, we can actually see some of the battle damage on this one. So it did take a drop at some point, but has survived. 
and no doubt it is due to that 810G testing. On the left hand side of the machine we do have a power uh, USB type C port and then we have a, another USB type C port right beside it. These are 3.1 Gen 1. We have a USB A 3.1 Gen 1 port and we have an HDMI 1.4B. Along the back, uh, really nothing going on here. And then on the right hand side, we have the Kensington lock slot, the proprietary network dongle to give you the ethernet port, another USB 3.1 port, micro SD, and then a headphone microphone combo jack, the power button, and then last but not least, the garaged pen. Now this pen is not the exact one for this model, so that's why it does not fit correctly. Let's flip this thing over observe some of the other battle damage, although this just looks like wear um, from it rubbing against something more than anything. And let's proceed to undo all of the screws and gain access uh, to the machine. So for that, we will need our trusty set of screwdrivers. All right, so generally speaking, I like to go in on uh, the back of these yogas uh, just because I find the plastic clips give way a bit easier around this area. And I will say that this is uh, considerably easier at the moment anyway uh, to open thus far than uh, the previous yoga that I featured on this channel, <laughs> which was exceptionally tight. This one seems to be cooperating very nicely. Here we've got the insides and the space is used very efficiently. We have two directly uh, downward firing speakers looking at us. Here is our 45 watt hour uh, battery taking up uh, the bottom part of the case. We can see the pen garage here. And we see immediately staring us in the face pretty much all of the components that we would immediately want to service. We have the CMOS battery, uh, it's being held together by a piece of tape in here. All of our ribbon cables are pretty easily accessed. We have a socketed Wi-Fi card with the antennas running there. And we have our two RAM slots uh, ready to receive an upgrade. Hinges, everything else is pretty straightforward. So that's one of the things that the L series uh, kind of constantly surprises people is you know, just how much you can upgrade on the inside of these. Um, and I think that's one thing that I really want to highlight is that you can get a lot of that performance, um, but still benefit uh, from the modularity on these more budget lines. Uh, the other thing that I'll point out is that removal of the trackpad is done by removing the battery, then you can get at it from this side. To remove the keyboard on this, it's actually the same as the E595 that I featured on the channel. And if you want to know how to do that, I'll leave a link over here where you can uh, watch that video, skip to the disassembly part, and it's the same method where you have to pop up the two track point buttons, remove two screws, uh, and then the keyboard kind of lifts uh, its way out and I believe that there might be another screw on the inside here designated for keyboard removal. Uh, but I'll also be leaving a link to the hardware maintenance manual, and if you're not familiar with the hardware maintenance manual and how important that is for ThinkPads, it talks about how to disassemble the entire unit uh, down to every last component that can be serviced. So between those two, you should be able to easily figure out how to uh, service and remove the keyboard if that is necessary. So let's put everything that we have here back together and start this thing up. All right, let's go ahead and turn this thing on and see what we get for boot times. And not too shabby at all. And because we are running 8th generation Intel, we do have Windows 11 support. And this is the i5-8265U with 8 gigabytes of RAM. And of course we have pen and touch support on this uh, display, which is pretty bright, great viewing angles. And then of course, because it is a yoga, we can't go with the whole video without flipping this thing over. Now, this does not have the lift and lock uh, keyboard that we would see on, say, the X380, 
the more premium models, but the keyboard uh, still becomes inactive uh, when this is in tent mode or tablet mode. So there is uh, no real concerns uh, there, just a few cost saving measures for features that they can find other ways to work around. So overall, I think that these are perfectly serviceable machines. They're considerably less common, uh, at least on eBay at the time of filming. Um, that being said, if I had to choose between the silver and the black, I would go for the black only because you have a few additional features available to you that are not available uh, with a silver chassis for reasons that I suspect are relating to tooling and colors. The other thing too is that the uh, plastics, especially on the silver, when they wear, turn black. So um, if you're an aesthetic person uh, that might be bothered by wear and tear, then that might uh, be something for you to consider as well. Uh, overall though, uh, these can be found for about f starting around 400 Canadian dollars and uh, if they can pack an awful lot of bang for their buck. If you do have any questions or stories or uh, information about, leave them in the comment section down below. We get that conversation going. And as always, if you've enjoyed uh, this sort of content and would like to support the channel, there's all sorts of ways that you can do that over here. And with all that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.